Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to come on today and kind of play with new makeup. So some of this stuff is pretty new to me and some of it I've had and I just haven't used it on camera. I think there's only a couple of powders, you know, like my hourglass powder and my under eye concealer powder that I use almost every day that will be repeats. Um, the rest of the stuff I don't believe I have used on camera yet. So I'm just gonna hop right in. I don't have no idea how long this video is gonna be. If it's anything like all of my other hundreds of videos, it's not gonna be short. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have already done my brows and primed my eyes per usual. I'm trying a little bit of something different in the order that I apply my makeup lately and I'm putting my face makeup, so really just my primer, foundation, and concealer, I'm putting that on first before I do my eyes so that it can have time to kind of sink in and so that it's not so wet when I go in and set it with powder. I really feel like it's been making a difference. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm not using a primer because I'm gonna be using a new CC cream and I just feel like I don't really need a primer with it. So I am going to color correct first. I don't know if it's gonna come across on camera or not, but my dark circles have been so bad lately. I have no idea what it is. I'm trying to get enough sleep, but Chad's been out of town this week and it's just not easy. I feel like I've had something where I've needed to get up earlier than the girls do every day. So I'm taking half a pump of the Color Science Total Eye Renewal Therapy and I'm putting in, because my dark circles are so bad, I'm gonna put in a little bit of the Armani Master Corrector in orange. And all I did was kind of swipe the brush against my finger once to get whatever I could off. And then I'm just gonna mix those two together. Um, typically the color science is all I need, but when my dark circles are really bad, like they are now, I will mix in that Armani for an even deeper color corrector. I'm just going to blend that out. I mean, I don't think I, this is not really allergy. Well, who am I kidding? Every season is allergy season in Tennessee, but maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know, but they are just something else lately. And then I take, I always have like a little bit on the inside of my finger and I take that on my chin. Okay, I feel like I look more human now. <laughs> okay, so I am actually gonna pull my hair back for this because I don't need anybody telling me I play with my hair too much. So I have a subscriber that reached out to me a few weeks ago. She actually owns her own company. Um, I don't think there is a freestanding store. I think it's just an online business. It's called Freeze Co. Beauty and I will link her Instagram um, and the business website down below. And she wanted to send me some products from Sappho, which is more of like a clean green beauty brand. Um, she just thought after watching me that she thought I would enjoy them. And I said, sure, because I'm always down to try something new from that genre of makeup. So she sent me the um, Sappho New Paradigm CC Cream. So I asked her if she thought I would be light or medium because CC creams are sometimes kind of hard to determine that. She said that I would be light and after I researched some of the reviews, which are very good from what I've read on this product, um, a lot of people said that it did run kind of dark. So she did send me a perfect color in sending me light. I believe, let me check and see. So there are five shades in this. It is the typical one fluid ounce and it retails for $38. Now she was nice enough to give me a discount code for y'all and she says that it's site wide. So I'm looking to see with the brands that she carries. Uh, she carries Glow Skin Beauty, Henny Organics, um, Key, Key, We, K, Sonic, the um, cleanser kind of the silicone clarisonic type thing, Revitalash, Sappho New, New Paradigm, Sarah Hap, and Truth Treatment Systems, which I'll know how much I love Truth Treatment Systems. So she said that the code that I will put down here is going to be site-wide. I believe that per Sappho's kind of rules and regulations for codes, it can only last a few days. So if you're wanting any of the Sappho stuff that I try out today, I believe that's only gonna be active through this Friday. So I'll put all that information down below. But being a CC cream, I like to put it on with my fingers, at least to start with. 
The first ingredient in this is aloe, which is similar to my beloved Oxygenetic Foundation. It also has coconut oil in it, so if you are a little bit um, sensitive to that, you may want to take that into consideration, but it does not have any silicones or anything of that nature. So I'm just adding it onto my fingers and I'm going to start applying it like I would kind of a moisturizer. Uh, I need to be careful because I have already done my brows. And typically I don't like to apply things with my fingers too much because I have very reactive skin. According to Amber, my esthetician, I don't have sensitive skin, but I have reactive skin. So anytime basically it is touched, it gets really red. So I like to be as gentle as possible when I'm applying a CC cream like this. So I'm just going to kind of pat it in. It's very forgiving. I really think that that gave like a nice medium coverage for um, a CC cream and you can build it up a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to put a little bit more on my hand and put a little bit more on my chin, a little bit more on my cheeks and I'm just going to pat it in. You can use a brush. I wasn't the biggest fan of it with a sponge. For some reason, I just didn't feel like um, because it's kind of almost got like a gel moussey texture, I just didn't feel like it really worked that well with a damp sponge, but it does work okay with a brush as well. In fact, I'm going to use a brush on my neck. I just pumped out way too much, but again, again, it blends in really nicely with a brush. Um, I don't need more coverage than this because the powder that I'm going to use also has coverage in it. So I'm just going to leave it like this, but I hope that it's coming across on camera how nice of a finish it is it really is very skin like it's not um it's not dewy at all and it you know i think a lot of people can expect that from a cc cream so i was pleasantly surprised of the finish that it has now we're going to go in with another product that she sent me that i absolutely adore i use this on my other channel in my last video i posted and it's the sapphire sapho Sapphire. I always want to say Sapphire. Sappho New Paradigm Concealer. So she, she sent me this in medium and I'm really glad she did because I hope it's going to come across on camera. It has a little bit of a peachy undertone to it. It doesn't show up peach on your skin, which you'll be able to see, um, but it helps. That undertone really helps with any added darkness that is still showing through under the color corrector. So I'm applying that with a brush. You can apply it with your finger as well. Um, I smooth it out, buff it out, you know, with a beauty blender before I set it. All of it works really well with this. This does not dry my under eyes. A lot of time pot concealers can be drying. I don't find that it dries it at all. It doesn't crease and it just adds that extra bit of coverage. So even the other day when I was not using this CC cream, I was not using this concealer, I still pulled it out because I had just gotten Botox done and I, right in the middle of my eyebrows, I always, like you see the spot where she injected me for like days to come and I, foundation was not covering it up. So I went in with this to kind of add just a little bit more coverage on my nose and it worked so well. It just blends in with whatever foundation like, I really enjoy the CC cream, but I love the concealer. It wears really nicely throughout the day. Just so good. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to let it sink in while we go in with the eyes. The eyeshadow that I'm going to be using today is the One Palette by Lawless. I have had this probably for a little over a month, but I really have not gotten to play with it that much. I've been traveling, and when I, when I got it and opened it, one of the... Uh, shadows i don't know if you can see the shadow right here dtr was broken so i did not feel comfortable traveling with it um it is if you have not seen it a gorgeous palette this is by lawless beauty who is run by annie lawless and she does she has a foundation she has liquid lipsticks she has a powder that i absolutely love and then this this, these colors are right up my alley i love that it's got warm colors i love that it's also got cool colors and it's a really good mix of shimmer and matte. It does have more matte than shimmer, which I think a good balance. Sometimes even when it's half and half shimmer and matte, there's not quite enough matte options for me. So I have already used this first base, which is this white color down here to set the primer on my lids. I did not use powder like I normally did. Worked perfect. 
I think I want to do a little bit more of a cool tone look today, even though when you look at this, it kind of screams warm. I'm going to be using this bottom row of colors here, and I honestly have no idea what I'm going to do, so, you know, we're just going to figure it out as we go. I'm going to take the Sigma E25 blending brush, and I'm going to dip into this color called Infatuation. Where is it? Right here. Oh, it's so pretty. This is like my kind of color. If there is a pink berry color like this in a palette, I am typically go typically going to reach for that palette. The Too Faced Just Peachy Mattes palette has that color in it. It's my favorite one in that in that palette. I absolutely love it. So I'm I really want to make sure I knock the excess off since I've already got my face makeup on. But I'm just gonna put this all over the lid. Y'all know I don't do hard makeup look like eye looks. I don't think that, I just don't think it's necessary. And it's certainly not practical for every day. Um, oh, y'all, this color is so pretty. I'm not kidding you. This is, this and orange is my favorite eyeshadow color ever. There's no fallout, which is good. I mean, I did really knock the snot out of the brush, but wow, I love that color. I'm not getting too far in because I'm gonna wanna brighten that up with an inner corner highlight and I don't want it to look like I have a bruised eye, which a lot of times with these type of berry purples can happen quite easily. So I am going to stay away from that inner corner. It's a little, upon first application, it's a little patchy. Rest in peace eyelash. But it's nothing that doesn't blend itself out if you work with it. Like it's, it's not something I would consider a con to the palette. Holy cow, that color, y'all. I don't know if I have anything quite like this. This is a mixture. It's got more purple in it than the Too Faced color that I love so much, which is more of like a burgundy pink undertone. This might be my favorite color in the palette. That is very pretty. Okay, so now I really kind of just want to leave it at that because it's so pretty. But I'm going to take a little bit of this color called Cutie right here. This is a shimmer color. Um, it's almost more of a metallic. And I will say these are fragile. I see a couple of spots on Butterflies and Next Level that looks like it's about to um, break as well. Um, and when I was using first base and put my brush in it, I did feel the pan wiggle a little bit, which makes me a little bit nervous thinking it might actually fall out one day. But, um, so I, I don't know if I would recommend this for traveling. Um, I don't know if that's something that, you know, she's going to work on as she continues to develop more palettes or as she even continues to manufacture more of these. But it just, it, it makes me a little uncomfortable to travel with it. So I'm just going to put that right in the center. I really don't want to cover up that gorgeous color. Like I want that to shine through. I just want to give it a little bit of dimension. Now it is a little, it looks a little funky on the crease. So I'm going to go in with Baby, which is this color right here, on a crease brush. And I'm just going to kind of buff any harsh lines out. And I really want to go kind of high up on my brow bone because this color is also gorgeous and mixed with that purple. I really, I want it to be seen from far away. Y'all, I really like this. Let me go ahead and take a pencil brush and I'm gonna go into casual. I don't know if I'm gonna regret this because it, you know, it's a little bit of a sheeny color, but it also looks to have a little bit of a yellow undertone. And that's really not what I'm looking for to match this look, but Let's just see, because I just want to go right in, brighten up that inner corner. This is not as, this is not like a MAC nylon brightener. It's not what you're going to get from this. It is really pretty all over the lid if you want like a very subtle satin sheen, because this is not metallic by any means, but it just helps brighten up that inner corner just a little bit. All right, again, minimal fallout, but now we're gonna go back to the face. Everything's had a chance to kind of settle in a little bit. And I am going to kind of take any creasing that may have happened up in these lines that we all have, buff that out before I set it. And I'm just gonna use my typical uh, Laura Mercier blurring, secret blurring powder to set that. 
All right, now we're gonna go in to set the face. Now I had mentioned that this powder has a little bit more coverage. I've had this for quite some time, but I've never used it on camera. And it's the Jane Iredell, it's, it's just their powder foundation. This was actually sent to me, so it's not the way it looks if you were to order it in the compact. It just tells me the color, which is Golden Glow, but it's their powder foundation. Um, I'm gonna use the Jane Iredell The Handy Brush. Now I got this from Influencer when I was sent some Jane Iredell stuff. Um, a few months ago, and I'm telling you, there really truly isn't, unfortunately, a brush that I own that works as well with this powder as this one does. Um, I don't know if it's some kind of like voodoo magic they did to where you have to buy the brush, but it truly does work the best. So I'm just going to load up the brush, kind of fling it out, and then I'm just going to start buffing it into the skin over the CC cream. You can also press and stipple it in. But because I gave that CC cream, you know, some time to settle into my skin, doing this does not transfer it. It doesn't move it, doesn't make it go anywhere or look streaky. It just sets it with the most gorgeous finish. There is absolutely nothing matte about this powder foundation. I do think if you are not going to wear it with a CC cream under it, it definitely needs, um, something kind of wet as a primer. So the Smooth Affair Primer from Jane Ardell would be perfect. Um, any other BB cream or CC cream you have would be perfect, but it does need something to kind of attach to, per se. But I mean, I don't know if you're still seeing a glow from my skin, but looking at it in this mirror, I can still see. It just looks like skin. This powder is no joke. I love it. I do love it over like something like this more than I love it by itself. Um, but that's simply because I'm not a solo powder foundation person anyways. All right, let's, let's bronze. Now this is kind of a, and eh, I don't know about this product yet. This is the Lila B B Sunkissed bronzer. Uh, Packaging is beautiful. I'm sure you've heard about it. It's very heavy. It feels like a pebble. It looks like a pebble. I can't get this to really show up on my skin. Now, I might need my words because I'm going to use it with my Bobbi Brown bronzer brush, which I haven't tried it with yet. But my Wayne Goss brush, my Beauty Counter brush, my Tom Ford brush, all of those, I can't get it to show up on my skin. I am not a dark skinned person. So, you know, I find that to be a little concerning. Obviously, one side of it is a little bit lighter than the other side being a duo but y'all I, I mean I just loaded a ton of product on my head and I can't see it can y'all see it I like to be like heavily bronzed but I mean I'm just asking for something to show up I don't think I can use this I'm just gonna go into my um never fail Bobbi Brown bronzer in Stone Street Ooh, that I can see I added too much I was so desperate for some kind of color that I just plopped it all over my forehead. I will have to buff that out. I don't know what it is. Has anybody else tried that Lila B and had issues with it? Because everybody else I've heard talk about it loves it. And I just can't see it. Highlight. I've had this again for quite a long time, but I don't, I've just never shown it. And it's the Tom Ford Sheer Highlighting Duo in Reflex Guilt. Um, it really probably is a little dark for me right now, but we're just going to lightly mix the two colors. I mean, this is a really pretty highlight. I don't, I'm not going to tell you it's so pretty that you've got to go out and like buy it because it's, it's Tom Ford, so it's not cheap. I think it's a little dark. I think you can see right here where it starts. So we're going to have to buff that out too. This is just not being, it's not the best. I loved it up until the bronzer and highlight. So, all right, let's talk about blush. Christine from Freeze Co Beauty also sent me two Sappho blushes. They come in just the pans, so you're gonna need some kind of palette to put them in. But the first one she sent is Natalie, which it looks like this. It's a really pretty peachy, like light peachy color. This is also really pretty for eyeshadow. I have used it as eyeshadow as well. And then she sent over this one, which I'm gonna use today, and it's called Emma's Blush. So it goes along with this kind of cool tone look we've got going. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this 
for my blush. Ties it all in together. And then we are going to buff. Hourglass Radiant Light. Did you even have to ask? I'm really concentrating on that highlight because I want to try to bring down the darkness of it some. So whenever I use like a powder foundation to set something like I have done today, I especially like to spray it with some kind of mist to kind of sink everything down, take the powdery look away. This is the Jane Iredell Pomist. It made it into my favorites for the year because I absolutely adore it. It's specifically made for her, for her, for her mineral products. So I figured that would make sense for me to use it today. This one does, I feel like, add a glow to your skin as well. But, oh, it's so nice. <coughs> the scent is a little strong, but it's nothing synthetic. It is a natural fragrance, so, and it dissipates. All right, I'm going to go back in and mix Baby and Infatuation, these two colors right here, for my lower lap. This is actually the number 19 brush. I typically will use the Wayne Goss 20. But I love that color so flippin' much that I wanted to bring it down a little bit farther. So I'm using a little bit of a bigger brush. And I am going to go in with the Marc Jacobs Primo Omega Shadow and use that for my brow bone highlight. I just wanted something a little bit brighter than that um, casual color that we used from the palette. So I am pretty much done with everything but lips and mascara. I will do mascara off camera and be back and show you a new lip gloss that I got. Okay, so mascara is on. I was going to show you one more thing before lips because she also sent me this Revitalash Defining Liner. So I don't know that I knew Revitalash had an eyeliner. If you don't know, that is the lash serum that I use on my eyelashes. I have for probably over two years now. This is $28.00. Um, it does not say anything like it's got ingredients in it that are going to help your lashes grow with application or continued wear. Um, it just says that it's a smooth glide and exceptional color payoff with ample playtime to blend or create. It also has a smudger at the end as well as, well, there's a sharpener in there too because it is a um, twist up. So I've been using this to tight line because I don't typically wear eyeliner. I will say from swatching it, I do agree with the ample play time. I think it is very smudgeable, but from the way that it lasts on my tight line, I would venture to say it's going to last all day as an eyeliner because I don't get any budging from this product on my tight line. So I am happy to have that. Um, I don't think it's that much different from my Pixie, but I do really enjoy it. Now, the lip gloss that was also sent from Sapphire, Sapphire, see? Why do I keep doing that? Sappho New Paradigm is this organic lip gloss in the color Hazy. So, let me see how they, Hazy do. Doesn't really have a description of the color, but it's a, it's a pink. Uh, this is $25, so I've tried this once, but I tried it over a lip gloss or a lipstick, so we're going to try it on its own. It really isn't that glossy. I mean, it has a nice sheen to it, but it almost applies like a liquid lipstick. It does say it's a gloss. Yeah, it says it on the package. I mean, can you get any more Mandy than that color? Yes, please. Oh, I love that color. I love it more on its own than I do topping it onto something else. And it matches this look perfectly. So aside from a couple of, you know, fails, I am really happy with how this look turned out. Again, I will list everything that I used from Freeze Co Beauty down below with the discount code. Thank you, Christine, if you're watching, for sending those. I am so happy to be uh, introduced to this new brand because I am pleasantly surprised. So if you have any questions, be sure and put them down in the comment section below. As always, everything will be listed and linked in the description bar. And thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.